Hey guys, welcome to I've Never Said This Before with me, Tommy D'Addario. Today's guest is a Stockholm-based singer and actor, and his name is Omar Rudberg. Now, Omar, he has a fascinating backstory. So get this, at just 25 years old, he has already sold out arena shows in Sweden and tours here in America. At 14, he was the opening act for really, really small musicians. You probably never heard of them. Justin Bieber and One Direction. (laughs) Yeah, no big deal, right? And since then, well, his career, it has skyrocketed. And today, we are talking about a certain project that further shot him into global superstardom. And I've got two words for you, Young Royals. So Young Royals is a teen drama romance series on Netflix that follows the fictional Prince Wilhelm of Sweden and his romance with fellow student Simone Eriksson, which of course is played by Omar, and all of the wild, messy, beautiful drama that their love story brings. It's a queer love story that has become one of the most important love stories in all of television, and that just goes to show you why it's been sitting at number one on the charts every single time a new season drops. It means so much to so many. But sadly, the love story is coming to an end with the final season that has just dropped out right now. I know. But this is an episode for all of the Young Royal fans out there. We're not going to be spoiling anything, so don't worry about that. But what we are going to do is we're going to celebrate. We're going to reflect back on Omar's journey throughout the series and deep dive into all things Young Royals to honor and celebrate an actor who means so much to so many. So let's see if today we can get Omar to say something that he has never said before. Oh, Omar, it's so good to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. I'm glad to see you, too. Oh, well, listen, I know that the world is celebrating and super excited because season three of Young Royals has dropped. But with that, there's a lot of sadness because that means it is the final season of the show. So first of all, how are you doing? Has it been a really emotional time for you? It has definitely been emotional. I've been going through it, but I think that I'm actually, I'm very ready to let go a little and just let these characters in the series live on by itself. I mean, we've been working so hard on this season and on Young Royals overall for the last three years. So I think we're all kind of in the same boat where we feel like, let them be, you know? I think everything great and everything good has an end. But it feels great. I mean, I'm happy that we actually got to do the last season and three seasons. So I'm very happy. I'm very proud. What was it like saying goodbye to your character on that last day of work? Was that a super weird kind of day for you? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was very emotional. I couldn't really like feel the difference between uh, Simon's feeling on camera and my own feelings off camera. It was kind of the first time where like fiction and reality like kind of got together in some weird way because what we were saying in that last scene for example in the lake where because we shot the lake scene on our last shooting day and what we're saying in that scene basically makes sense in real life as well you know like it's the end basically and so that was kind of very hard because it was emotional and I couldn't really control my feelings (laughs) But it was a very beautiful day, and yeah, we had such a great time together. When you look back at all of your work on this show, you have done such a phenomenal job creating a character that means so much to so many people. What are you the most proud of? Thank you. You know what I'm proud of is that I put myself out there, I think. I had never done anything like this I didn't act didn't know if I could act at the time and I was afraid of like what if I get in this whole thing and I forget my words like there's a lot of words you have to learn like the script like what if I never learned the script and I was like so afraid of so many things and I was just like you know fuck it let's just do it you know let's just 
put myself out there and do everything that I got to be a part of this because I also believed in the story. I believed in in everything about this. And I was like, if I'm going to be so sad and angry with myself if I don't do it because I fell in love with it from the start. And so I'm just so, so happy I threw myself out there, out of my comfort zone. And I started acting out of the blue and like just did it. You know, yeah, that must be an amazing feeling. And anything new is kind of scary, right? And you've conquered it's the music that. world, but this was something so different for you. Was there a moment where you were actually thinking about passing on this opportunity? No, <laughs> never, never, not a single like moment. I didn't do anything at the time. It was COVID and, and everything was shut down and like the studios and like music wise as well. Like everything was just shut down, really. And I didn't really have anything to do I was like kind of depressed because I didn't really know what was going to happen to me in in my life what I was thinking the whole time was I'm going to be a part of the show and I'm going to be doing this or I'm going to die like that was my two options <laughs> um so very serious and um but then I got in and I got to be a part of this and never ever thought of thinking like no, I, I'm, I don't want to do a second season. Like, none of that. Like, I was, I've was, i been obsessed with this whole thing. Like, I'm one of the biggest fans of Young Royals. Like, fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. It's, it's, why wouldn't you be? It's such a beautiful show. If you were given yeah. the choice to do more seasons and carry on with the story, would you or do you kind of feel like the story has been told and it's ending where it should end? I feel like the story has been told and it, should end how it's ending because i kind of agree with with edwin and lisa and and all of the others about that like if you would do more seasons like what is it left to say like we've already said like most important things and we've said so many great things and you know very sad things as well and like we've said so many things during this whole show and the journey and i feel like it wouldn't be what it is if we would keep going like and keep doing like seasons like if you see other series out there like when you do too many seasons like at the end of the day it's not the season that you saw the first time i don't know it's just the right thing to do i feel like definitely but you know at the beginning i was like let's do a season four and a five let's go because i'm such a hyped person and i always and i always and i also hate saying goodbyes to things like i i i'm definitely a person that connects with something and I, I feel like it's hard to like let stuff go like it takes time for me to let stuff go sometimes and sometimes not sometimes I'm like Shoof. but uh, <laughs> this definitely was something that I've been holding on to this like so hard and you know feels right definitely how many times did you cry during the filming of season three <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know maybe like Six times, maybe six times. Yeah. Well, that means it meant so much to you. And yeah. and watching you and Edvin throughout this, this series has been magical for people. He, of course, is your co-star and watching your journey and the ups and the downs and the drama and the beautiful moments and everything has been thrilling for audiences. How has that friendship been over the years? Is that something so special for you? Me and Edwin, it's been very special. Like I'm, I'm happy that we clicked from the start because what we've been going through and everything that we've been through together like it would be so sad to do it yourself like by yourself and no one to like have this whole do it together kind of thing like it's different thing to do it together and you know we've been talking about everything that has happened to us like we text a lot like randomly like yo this and this happened like what the fuck like oh we're we did the Fallon show together like what if I would be there alone like I would die if I would do it alone and so like it's very special to like just do it with someone like going through something with someone that can relate like me and Edwin we can really relate to each other and we definitely help each other through stuff and like we learn from each other and all of that so it's it's been very special Definitely. And we we're definitely like brothers when we hang out. Like we we poke at each other and do crazy stuff together. And we sometimes get annoyed on each other, but it's all love, you know. It's um 
we always have a good time together. Always. Like every time we see each other, we laugh and we talk about crazy stuff and, you know, secrets. <laughs> yeah, it's family, right? It's a brotherhood. Yeah, definitely. We have a great time together. So in the show, um, and I guess without spoiling anything in season three, is there a moment between the two of you that just makes you smile for your characters that you just loved playing around with? Oh my God, there's so many moments. Like it's so hard to like choose. Like top one or two, come on. I'll definitely say that the lake scene was very special. It was just a beautiful day. The lake was stunning. The sun was stunning. It was warm. It was very cold in the water though, but it was very warm in the sun. And it was emotional. It was beautiful. Like that day, that whole day in front of that lake was just dreamy. Like it felt like a dream, like a like a real like a real life movie almost. Mm. And it was just so beautiful. So I would definitely say the lake. And probably, I don't know, probably like the first kiss was also very special because it was very new and it was the first time we did like a kissing scene. Was that your first, that was your first kissing scene on camera, right? Uh, yes, exactly. And it was just a special thing. Is that weird? Is it weird to do a kissing scene on camera with a million people in a room watching you in a camera this close? I mean, like, it was so weird because it was the first time. So that is why I'm saying like the first scene was very special and very crazy experience i also like the football scene where i like go and pick him up and he was like being like drunk and like it was just also just like a fun experience it sounds like without giving anything away you're satisfied with how the show ended yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i do think that <laughs> i think uh it's the right ending i had my heart and my trust in lisa and i really you know, I knew that she was going to put a great ending on it. And it was it's it's a perfect ending. It's a perfect timing for an ending. It's beautiful and it's like emotional and it's love this series so much. I'm a huge fan. Oh, well, we all are. We all are. <laughs> when you think of Omar from season one to Omar from today, yeah. how would you say you've changed over all of those years? What I imagine is for the better. Oh, yeah, definitely for the better. It's insane. I feel like I've been living a whole life from when we started till now. I cannot believe that we're actually sitting here and we're actually talking about this. At the same time, it just kind of feel like it just started. Like, I cannot believe that it's four years ago, like four years ago. Like, it's insane. Like, I can't I cannot really take that in. But, um, you know, I've changed a lot, like as a person, definitely for the better. I'm grown, a little more grown. I have a little confidence boost from this whole journey. And also my insecurities, I've kind of learned to handle them a little as well. And just like in general, like I just feel like I'm in a place in my life where I'm like more stable and I kind of know what I like and what I want and what I don't want. And what I don't like and like what I want to do. Like, I just feel like I'm, I'm grown, you know, like I'm 25 and it's definitely a difference. When I started Young Royals, I was in a place where I didn't know anything and I was very lost. And, but I was also happy when it all started because I got to know new friends. And for example, Felicia, Maxime, um, the actress that plays Stella in Young Royals, I got to know her and a lot of new friends and like this whole new like space of creativity and like acting and like partying, but also like I just got so many new friends at the time and we were like a little crew and we were hanging out and it was summer in Stockholm and Young Royals came up and I was still kind of lost because it was COVID and I didn't have a job. I didn't know what to do with my life. So I was just hanging out with friends. And then like, I don't know, it's I'm a whole different person. But I still have that Omar with me as well. Like I'm still, I still have that in me, but I'm definitely grown. Well, I have to say we chatted, I think in the beginning of the pandemic. So that by now, that was three, four years ago. And I see... 
insane. It's, it's insane. insane. And I, I see such a, a different version of you, even from that interview to today's conversation. You really seem like you've stepped into your confidence and it's such a cool thing to see. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there something from the set, aside from the hoodie, we all know about the hoodie that you grabbed right away when the show wrapped? <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna if I if I dare to say it because I don't want them to want it back, but probably not. Probably they won't want it back. But um, I actually um stole uh, Simon's little lava lamp. Do you see oh, that? Yeah. Where he had next to his bed, like the one that like changed colors and like sh shifts. I actually have it like next to my bed. It's actually dead though. I have to change the batteries of that one. But uh, <laughs> that's I, a good I, choice. That's a good. If I was gonna take something, you know what? I would want the lava lamp too. I like that. And yeah, it's uh, it was always on the frame. Like you always saw someone in his bed, and then you see the lights of the lava lamp. It's just beautiful. And I took that one. I st literally stole it. Like I didn't say to anyone, and I knew it was the wrong thing to do. But I just no one was there, and I was in Simon's room, like kind of saying goodbye to Simon in his room. And then I was like, Boop, took it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't touch no one and i just took it like i didn't give a damn like i was like i'm gonna bring something like are you kidding me this whole room and you're and i cannot even bring a single thing like are you kidding so i just took it you took know what it. you were having an emotional breakdown and you took it and i support it i stand by yeah, that decision <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome the show uh you know I, Aside from the beautiful pieces on set that have so much meaning to you and the characters, I feel like music's another thing that has a lot of meaning throughout the show. When you now look back at Young Royals, is there one song? I'm sure there are many, but I guess what's a top song that will always remind you of your time on that show? Oh my gosh, there's three I think of right now. Yeah, go ahead. Dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. Uh, how's it going? Uh, I don't know the lyrics, but that one, it's a bop. It's really good. Also, um, let's start a revolution, obviously. And also, and you love me, I would feel it because I love him. You know that one from the second season? love that one and that trailer is sickening i think that's one of my favorite trailers of the show like i love the second season trailer with the music it's just mm. so amazing solid choices solid choices god it's like you're a singer as well or something that just sounded so good <laughs> <laughs> those are awesome choices omar a part of the reason why i love this show so much is because of what it's done for an entire community of people. And the queer community holds this show so close to their hearts. And it really is one of these forms of representation that exists that I wish I had growing up and I didn't have it. And it's such a beautiful story. That's what I love about it. It's a beautiful story. So how does it feel meaning so much to an entire community of people, to the queer community, because you were in a show and brought a character to life that makes them feel so seen? Well, I definitely agree with you. I wish that I had Young Royals when I was a kid because it would change my life, I think. Like, if I would have Young Royals when I was a kid, I think it would definitely move me. And it did. Like, the craziest part is that I'm a part of the show and it literally moved me. Anyways, like, even though I'm not a kid watching it or a teenager, I still feel it. And even though I know everything that is happening before I see it, like I feel it while creating it. And so I'm just, it's such an honor, like for real, like I, I there's no other like word to describe it. Like it's an honor to be a part of something like this and being a part of something that really means so much for people around the world. And it means so much to me as well. Personally, I, Young Royals moves me and changed me as a person. And I'm just, it's just an honor and I'm a lucky, lucky, lucky man that got to be a part of something this amazing and great. And I'm just so thankful and grateful. That's very beautifully said. I imagine yeah. carrying that on your shoulders throughout all the years is rewarding and beautiful and amazing because, as you said, you know what it means to so many people. But 
Did you also ever feel kind of the pressure of having to do everything right and to to make the people who hold the show so close feel like it's all being portrayed in the right ways? Like, how do you deal with that? Knowing that you exploded from the show and you have all this fandom and, and it's a storyline that is really sensitive and delicate, yet you still got to go to work and do your job. Like, did that ever get in the way for you? Yes, yes. When we were going to do the first season, I my thoughts were like, because I knew people were going to love this series. I knew people were going to love the storyline because I was so in love. And I was like, yo, this is the greatest shit I've ever fucking read. But I was like, this is going to blow. Like, this is going to be amazing. The only thing, though, when I started doing the first season was like, are people going to think I'm good, though? Like, are people going to buy what I'm trying to say like through my character and like how I'm going to play him are people going to like enjoy that and see that and buy it like oh yes yes I I, I see Simon you know what I mean yeah um I was very nervous and I was also very nervous because I was an artist and I am an artist and didn't do any acting before that and I was just scared that people would just say you know go back to music don't ever do this again like stuff like that I was scared of not uh, taking me seriously kind of thing. Like I thought I, I was scared that people would just like, eh. but then for the second season, it was more like it was a success and people actually liked my acting and they, they liked what I did. And so then I kind of like, well, I have to do it even better this time and not like n don't go underneath that. Like that's the level I'm going for now. So I'm going to do it like I did or even better. And obviously I was like, this is going to be even better. Like I'm going to do it even better this time. And also I felt like the chemistry between me and Edwin, like people loved it so much on the first season. And I remember talking to him like, yo, we have to fuck this shit up. Sorry for <laughs> I love it. But we have to make it so good because like we're doing the second season and people loved what they saw in the first one. Like we have to do this. Like we have to make it even better this time. But I was also so confident in like having that energy. Like we have to do this, you know, instead of like, oh, we I'm scared. Like, oh, like it was more like, oh, let's push it even more, you know. But yeah, definitely got to us sometimes like, oh, damn, we have to do this right, like, oh, you know, stuff like that. But together, we really made it work, and we we had fun, and we never took it too seriously. But definitely doing the first season and the second season it was scary. But the third, it was more like, we got this. Let's have fun with this. It's a beautiful story. Like, let's just do what we love to do and what we do best. And we do it together. And I feel like the third season was the easiest one to shoot because we were like, we got this, you know, when people love this and this is a great storyline, let's do this. Does that mean the third season was your favorite one out of all three? I cannot tell you. Like it's picking a child. Like you yeah. cannot, like the first season, even though it was scary, the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. But the third was also the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. Like all of them were great, you know, so um, cannot choose. It was just different feelings for every yeah. season. First season was the first time. So it was so special. The second season, the feeling changed because we've done it once. We're going to do it again. Like it has to be good. But like, you know, it was kind of like more of like a battle feeling. And then like the third was just like, let's just enjoy, you know, so it was just different feelings to them well people want a fourth a fifth a hundredth a two hundredth <laughs> i'm sure you're already seeing all over social media people asking you for a spinoff right have you seen that yet yeah, yeah i've seen it i've seen it <laughs> i'm sure you've seen it everywhere and you're probably like let's give the character a minute <laughs> right? yeah you know like the first time when i saw that i was like tell the netflix tell netflix but then i was now i'm kind of like you know what I'm like turning 26. Like, should I play 16 still? Like, maybe like. What about a time jump? I mean, why not? But still, I don't look like I'm super old. But like, I don't know. Maybe I could play like Simon after graduation and he starts to work and have a job and moves out of his mom's house. Then maybe we can talk about it.
anything can happen. So we'll see. What, <laughs> what excites you for the future? What do you want to do next? I'm actually going full on music next. I'm about to sign my first record deal with an American label. Congratulations, man. Thank you so much. And that is a huge thing. It's a huge label. And um, we are planning on releasing a lot of music. So I'm working on a lot, a lot of new music. And we're going to release very, very soon. And I did my first show like two weeks ago. It was like 1,800 people in the crowd. And it was just completely sold out. And it was like one of my best nights ever like one of the best nights of my life and i want to do it over and over again and in my heart i'm an artist and i want to do music and i want to sing so that's definitely what i'm doing now in the future but then you know we'll see like i'm not gonna leave the film industry like i love making films and acting and uh so we'll see what comes up but uh for now definitely music so does that mean we're finally gonna get red light <laughs> yes yes it's on the way it's on the way soon. Very, <laughs> soon very soon we're working on it we're working on it but very soon and and that's going to be the first release of this year and um it's going to sound a little different the studio version from what i did at circus at my show it was a live version of red light but i do think people are going to enjoy it and i feel like it marks like a new era for me music wise and artist wise because you know i'm having a new team in uh an american label so it's like a whole new like era for me as an artist and i'm very happy about it that's so deserved you're such a talent and i know people are gonna want lots and lots of content from you especially <laughs> with the show ending they're gonna need some yeah. music they're gonna need all of it when you think of the fandom the beautiful, amazing fandom who who shows nothing but love for all of you guys. What do they mean to you? What do you want to say to them? Thank you for being loud. Thank you for doing free promo for Young Royals and making it top the charts. And thank you so much for, you know, existing and keeping the LGBTQ community alive and, you know, Thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for being yourselves and thank you so much for supporting us and the series and this whole love story that is so important for people to hear about and see, you know, and to talk about. Thank you so much for fighting for all of us and, and for believing in love and for fighting for love. And yeah, we're forever grateful for you guys and... um this wouldn't be what it is without you. So cheers to you. Oh, I'm not the one saying goodbye to a show or character, but you're making me feel emotional over here. <laughs> Damn it, Omar. <laughs> that was so well said. Thank you for sharing that. And as we kind of wrap up, the name of the show is I've Never Said This Before. And I'm wondering, is there anything that you can think of that you've never shared, whether it's silly or deep or anything that comes to mind? Oh my God. Well, um, maybe one thing that just came up is that people might be sad about the show ending and not seeing me and it being acting together anymore or working together anymore. But you know what? Me and Edwin are going to do some stuff together in the future. We are working on something that is a little secret but um stay tuned because you'll see me and Edwin do stuff together in the future and it's not completely over so and we're definitely obviously going to be friends still but like working together not completely over yet oh that is quite the tease i see <laughs> what you did there i see what you did all right well we will eagerly be awaiting that i can't say it enough thank you for everything you've done with your art and for an entire community of people that just feel so touched by a show a show that's gone global and you know that started off maybe seemingly small and has grown into something so incredibly big and i think that you're going to forever have a legacy in the entertainment space as being a part of a show that truly makes so many people feel so important and so valued and so um so seen so 
for real from the bottom of my heart congratulations to you i hope you soak in all of those accomplishments oh thank you so much thank you i mean it and i'm going to be chatting with the creator lisa and for everybody listening that episode is going to be full of spoiler fun we're going to launch that a little bit later in april so we'll give people time to watch the show today i wanted to make sure to just talk about the reflections in general and really give people a a proper farewell to your character and your work on the show but my conversation with lisa will be quite spoiler full so everybody look out for that and omar i can't wait to chat with you when you're doing something cool next again yeah i cannot wait well thank you thank you thank you for joining the show congratulations and have a great final season thank you for having me thank you 